everybody, what's happening? Sammy the Thrifty Brewer coming at you, and happy Homebrew Wednesday for July the 2nd. So, what better way to do a Homebrew Wednesday than to uh, do a brew? This is going to be the Stinky Pit Pale Ale. Stinky Pit, because I just finished cutting the grass. Brewing in the shed. So I'm not entirely certain of the sky. Give you guys a shot of that. It's looking a little dark, a little nasty. So I figured why not? We're brewing the shed. Just heating up the old strike water now. SJ Pour Challenge 2014. A global homebrew competition. Living it up, living it up. So other than that, I'm gonna try and do a review of my brew process today for you guys. I briefly touched on it before, but I really want to do a little bit of uh, in-depth action for you. Um, like I said, um, I'm just going to pause this and I'll show you sort of what I've got going on here. Cheers. So we got the inline thermometer, which I've recently recalibrated. It was off by about three degrees, sitting at about uh, 40, sorry, 39 degrees Celsius. My uh, strike temp. I want to bring it up to 72.9 with my mash being at about 69, sorry, 60, yeah, 68.9 or 69 degrees Celsius. And I've got uh, five and a half kilos of T-Row, uh, 450 grams of Crystal 60, 230 grams of Cara Foam. Hop schedule is 32 grams of Centennial at first first wart hop additions. I'm actually trying to get away from uh, get away from dry hopping now. And then at 20 minutes, I add 28.35 grams of Centennial. And then at 10 minutes remaining, I add a wart flock tablet, 60 grams of Centennial at five minutes, and then finally 14 grams of uh, Centennial for whirlpool for 15 minutes total. And then going to ferment her out with some uh, USO4. So, looking forward to that. I'll touch base with you guys in a little bit as I uh, start doing in. But yeah, this is it basically. I've like I know I've touched on it before. I've got my outflow coming in here, going into my chugger pump. That's going to draw it all the way up to the top. Into the top here, you'll see it's got everything sort of working its magic there, going to recirculate things, sort of bring it up to the boil a little bit quicker, but one thing I did add though, I did add another shutoff valve to the bottom, right there, big thanks to Patrick and the good folks at OBK for that, and yeah, that's where we're at right now, so we'll touch base with you guys as I'm uh, doing in, cheers. <coughs> Alright, so I overshot my strike temp, because I wasn't paying attention, so anyway, with my brew dog Spence, who wants to play. But here's the kicker. My keg just kicked. So I've got a uh, I've got a pale ale sitting in secondary that I was gonna rack in. So today is gonna be a brew day slash kegging day. Fucking hell. What do you say, Spence? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? What are you doing? There he goes. And he'll be back in a second. Here he comes. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> oh, shit balls. Brewing on a Wednesday. Awesome. Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everybody. Cheers. Okay, well, I'm waiting for my strike water to cool down. I thought I would rack the Double Trouble Pale Ale Take Two. Original gravity was 1044. She's finished off at uh, 1012, which gives me a nice little easy drinking and sessionable beer. According to Beersmith at uh, 4.2, which is perfect. It's totally what I wanted. So, just filling up the keggy poo there. And yes, Jim from the old Fats Brewery. I'm fucking around with this little bit of malarkey here, mate. So, what I did, brother, is I filled my siphon with water and I put have a lovely little little doodad here give this a bit of a twizzle and that uh, I hit the siphon lock here 
That stops the flow, so it traps the water inside the hose. And then, I start the siphon by undoing, I give this a bit of a twizzle, undo the siphon lock, into this little bucket poo here, and as soon as I get clear beer, I'll then bring it over into the keg. Works really, really well, mate. Really, really well. So, this is turning into a fucking brew day from hell, because I'm looking at the keg, I'm looking at what I got left, and I'm thinking, fuck, I need the bottle. Shit. So I'm going to have loads left over in the keg. Actually, loads left over in the secondary there. So shit. God damn it. This is turning into a brew day from hell. Cheers, guys. Be back in a second. All right, guys. So I'm sitting right at 69-ish. I'm going to bump it up a little bit more and uh, do my strike temp, which should be... 72.9, so I'm just going to give it a quick flash of the heat from down below. We're ready to dough in. Bottle those last six bottles because haste not, want not, and being the thrifty brewer, we can't waste beersies. Cheers, guys. Okay, guys, just mashed in. Got uh, all my grains in there. Now, what I'm going to do is with this really, well, bit of half inch silicone hose. And you'll see, hopefully you can see, I've got some holes cut in. Now the holes are going to go, let's see if I can do this all in one shot here. Holes are going to go onto the bottom of there. And then I'm going to hit the mash pump, chugger pump I should say. And that's going to recirculate my wart from top to bottom during the mash process. So more on that in a second. I know the video isn't the best, but I just don't want to start losing efficiency here. So you get it. It's uh, basically one every one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, give or take. More in a bit, lads. All right, mashing in at target. Hopefully this focuses in. 69 degrees Celsius is what I wanted. This is what we're looking at down below. Well, I'm going to have to crank that back a bit. So all I want to do is just have a nice, and basically at capacity here, you'll see that's going to just be bringing the wart circulating in from the bottom, down here, into the top. Hopefully we do okay. We'll let that go. 90 minutes. Timer's on. Giddy up. So then, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, look at that. Good thing I'm brewing outside. Inside. Started to rain. <laughs> Giddy up, lads. So I got. Uh, Five bottles left over from the last that was in the uh, secondary there. Snagged a cider. Then we're going to go upstairs and uh, see how the mash is doing. Hopefully the temperature hasn't dropped a lot. Oh, yeah. That's the, under, that's the end of the stairs brewery. 50 Brewer Headquarters. That's a fucking mess. Maid's out of town. All right. Here we go, lads. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. To the kitchen. Yeah, a little oasis on, giddy up, outside, trampoline for the kidlets, here we go, apologize for the motion sickness, oh fucking hell, a bit of a nightmare this day has been, alright, perfect, sitting right at 69, right where I need it to be. Beautiful. So, we got one, 117 left in the mash. We're going to raise up the temp and go from there. Whew. Cheers, everybody. Here's to a happy, wet Homebrew Wednesday. I got some cleaning to do. Cheers. Okay, guys, so we are sitting at 
47, well, 48 minutes into the match, basically. Spencey, what are you up to, silly boy? My brood dog, Spence. And how are things looking under here? Haven't checked in a bit. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Just slowly recirculating over the top of the wart, or sorry, sorry, over top of the mash bed. Working its way down, coming through the pump in the bottom. Up and around, just recirculating through. Seeing as I recalibrated the thermometer, we'll see how our numbers are at post mash. Cheers, everybody, and happy motherfucking homebrew Wednesday. All right, guys, so, pre boil gravity measured out at 1049, bang on the numbers. Looks like recalibration of the inline temperature gauge worked out like a bloody treat. So we're just in the boil. Put a 90 minute boil here. And I have got 47, well, basically 48 minutes left to my next step, which will be a addition of um, 28.3 grams of Centennial at 20 minutes left. Because I did the uh, first word hop edition of the Centennial at the beginning. Smells amaze balls. So, cracking on, cracking on. We swing on the swings. We. Alrighty guys, Sammy back at ya. 14 seconds, oh, 10, 10, 9, 8. Here already have the old Wurf Lock tablet. I've done two hop editions already. Uh, really, I missed the uh, second one. There we go. Wurf Lock is in. Now, next edition is going to be... Next edition is going to be 60 grams of Centennial at 5 minutes. Got that all ready, ready about here. It smells amaze balls, amaze balls. Uh, it's getting ready for the well, the second to last top edition. Twenty four, twenty three. Oh, and by the way, I have two horses humping. <laughs> That's what happens when the kids put their toys in Daddy's brew shed. Oh. What are you doing? Nothing. Horses having a grand old time. Okay, here we go. 60 grams of Centennial into the pool. It smells so good. So good. Okay, next edition will be... Um, at the end of the boil... We're going to do a steep edition um, with 14 grams of Centennial, 15 minutes. Stoked. Gonna get a little bit dodgy. So, last top edition is in. That is the uh, kill the kill the heat. Now, I'm not going to film this because I need two hands to do it, so bear with me for just one second. Lid goes back on. I'm going to take that hose, come from, from there to the pump, and we'll uh, go from there. See you guys in just one second. Okay, so laps, the last tops are in at 12.15, which means we're going to run over by about three minutes. So then again, we got the pump going coming off the bottom, through the pump, and through the outflow, and through the top. We're just going to recirculate. See a nice, healthy, just little dippity, dippity, dippity do. Can't really see too well, but that's all right. Just moving around okay. Let that go for 15 minutes, and cool this bitch down. Cheers, everybody. Okay, 536, 32, 33, 31, 530 remaining, plus an additional two minutes on the Whirlpool. 
Let's take a look inside and see how things are progressing. We're sitting at 200, well, actually one, well, sub 90. Let's see if I can get this to focus in a little bit. Damn iPhones. We'll call it 90 degrees. And we got some good flow happening there. Sorry about the steam. Hope you guys can pick that out. I'm just going to whirlpool this for another. Let's just call it seven minutes. And uh, we're going to chill. Okay, guys, I didn't show you uh, installing the uh, immersion chiller because it's a bit of a rigmarole with the whirlpool. But, got an idea of how it works. Pumps recirculating right now. We're pulling the wort around, sitting at uh, 154 and dropping. I'm just going to move that little bit down because I'm getting a little too much aeration there. Give me a second here. Alright, so chiller is out. Sitting at about uh, 22 degrees Celsius. Just got things whirlpooling a little bit. I had to make some adjustments to the hose length, but that's what it's all about. So things are moving along nicely. Moving around a nice little clock, sorry, counterclockwise fashion. Let that whirlpool for a good 15-20 uh, minutes. Let it run on down, and then we will uh, transfer to primary. So cheers everybody. Alright guys, so ended up with 25.1.2 gallons or 0.2 liters of stinky pit pale ale. Finishing off at 10.59. Pretty happy with that. And beside that there's the old SJ Pour beer, which we'll be bottling this weekend. Gonna ferment this turd out uh, for a week and a bit, and we'll give her a bash. So yeah, very happy with the brew day. Very, 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 very pleased. All right, so that's me. That was my brew day today. I want to apologize for the length. I realize it was very long and lack of editing. I'm just fried. Sleepy, sleepy times very, very soon. Anyways, you guys, cheers and happy homebrew Wednesday. A little bit of Mrs. Thrifty's apple cider crystal 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 clear I'm gonna be uh, bottling that probably this weekend and you know what probably won't I'm gonna bottle my SJ pour beer this weekend first and foremost time permitting I will bottle uh, Mr. Thrifty's oh, excuse me toe pointer cider but we'll have to wait and see how that goes um, it's gonna get one brew ahead basically of a keg kicking <coughs> pardon me so yeah other than that, not much has happened. I want to wish everybody a happy Canada Day. And to my U.S. friends, happy Independence Day. Miracle. On July the 4th. Cheers, everybody. To you. Also, want to thank uh, all my new subs. It's growing and growing and growing and growing. And yes, when I hit 250... I will do a contest. I'm not sure what the contest is going to be yet, but I will do something. i got some time. Um, I think European SJ Poor is done. Not done, but I think it, stuff has to be shipped to Tony by like beginning of next week, I think, or beginning of this week. Canada, okay, we still got some time. August uh, 11th, between August 11th and 16th, I have to have them. But I will be running between... Um, Bracebridge and Southwestern Ontario the weekend after the August long weekend. Um, so those guys in Kitchener, Waterloo, Hamilton, Toronto and whatnot, we'll set up a time maybe we can get together and uh, I'll pick up your beersies, which will definitely save you guys on the shipping. Then I'll flip them around and send them back to you guys the following week, which would be way cool. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. This has gone on crazy long. I want to thank you guys ever so much for liking, subscribing, uh, taking the time to watch, uh, thumbing up the videos, checking out the web page, checking out, not the web page, checking out the Facebook page, and uh, being a part of this fantastic thing called Homebrew Wednesday. 
it means a lot. So anyways, everybody, cheers. Thank you again so very much from the bottom of my heart. It does mean a huge deal to me. To you and yours, cheers, and happy Homebrew Wednesday. And thank you so very much for watching. All the best. <laughs> Hopefully there will be some left to bottle this weekend. Cheers, everyone. Take care. See you next week.